So hello everyone, welcome to my channel Level Up for You. So I'm Anjali back with an another video. So today I'm back with a topic silkworm. So what is silkworm? Why this worm is so precious and demanding? And why silkworms are called the queen of textile? Or is this a livelihood opportunity for millions and what is sericulture it is very important interesting and knowledgeable and informative so stay tuned to the video till end to get the fact incomplete and don't forget to like subscribe and comment so let's get started silkworms are economically important insects and the primary producer of silk silk is very expensive because this is an expensive process and silk worms are rare and hard to find its price range is from nothing to 10 silk worms cost two dollars and 10 to 15 silk worms are needed to start in collection. Silk worms are soft bodied, slow moving and can grow up to 3 inches long. They are relatively fast growing insects and can grow up to 3 inches in length and can get ready for cocoon in as little as 25 to 28 days. Swil silk worms are the larva of the moth native to the Asia which spins a cocoon of fine strong lustrous fiber which is the commercial silk. The culture of silk worm is called sericulture. The species of silk worms which are raised now are distinguished by the quality of silk they produce. Silk worms feed on mulberry leaves and sometimes on Osage orange. The second species which is called the Bivoltine is normally found in China, Japan and Korea. The Polyvoltine type of mulberry silk worms are found in the tropics. The interesting thing about silk worms is that they are extremely delicate. Any loud noises or temperature changes or even strong smell can stop them to eat mulberry leaves. The silkworm only lives long long enough to lay about 500 eggs and silkworms go through four stages of development, egg, larva, pupa, adult. Ova or egg. Egg is the first stage of silkworm's life cycle. The female moth lays an egg of size of an ink dot at the time of summer or early fall. The warmth of the spring stimulates the egg to hatch. The eggshell provides protective covering for embryonic development. When laid, Eggs are of light yellow in color, but the fertile ovum darkens to blue gray in color within a few days. Larva. Larva is the vegetative state in which growth takes place. The larva of the silkworm is host specific to mulberry leaves. During growth, silkworms mold four times and the period between successful molds are called insta. The silk worm upon hatching is about one eighth of an inch and extremely hairy. The young silk worms can only feed on tender mulberry leaves. But however during the growth period, silkworms can also feed on 
tougher mulberry leaves. The larval stage lasts for about 27 days and silkworm goes through five stages of development called insta in this period. During the time of first molting, the silkworm shed their all hair and get a smooth skin. Pupa. As the silkworm starts to pupate, it spins a protective cocoon, the size and color of a cotton ball. The cocoon is constructed by a single strand of silk about 1.5 kilometers long. The silk cocoon acts as in protection for the pupa. Cocoons are shades of white, yellow and cream depending on the silkworm's genetics. After a final molt in the cocoon, the larva turns into a brown chitin like structure called the pupa. The metamorphic changes of a pupa result as in emerging moth. If the silkworm is allowed to become mature and break through the cocoon, the silk would be rendered and become useless for the commercial purposes. So the encased insect is plumped into the boiling water to kill the inhabitant and, the, and dissolve the glue holding the cocoon together. The end of the silk is then located and the cocoon is then unwound into a spindle to be made as a thread. Cocoon or edel stage. Cocoon is the stage in which the larva spins silk thread around it to protect it from predators. The silkworm traps itself inside a cocoon in order to pupate. The color of the cocoon depends on what the silkworm eats. It can range from white to golden yellow in color. After the second molting, the larva turns into a brown pupa. It takes about two to three weeks for a pupa to metamorphose into an adult moth. The adult stage completes the life cycle of a silkworm. This is the reproductive stage in which adults mate and females lay egg. Moths lack functional mouth parts so they are unable to consume food or nutrition. The silkworm's lifespan is about 8 weeks. Biologists have found the source of silkworm attraction to mulberry leaves their primary food source. Worms are born blind and without even the ability of flying. When silkworms mature to moths, then only they can fly. The great thing about silkworms is that they can grow as much as you feed them and they can go about a full one week without food. Keep in your mind, however, Silkworms can get dehydrated and die off after a few days without food and they should be at least fed once daily to remain healthy. Wash your hands thoroughly after handling the worms or food or else they may develop bacterial problems. For best results, Maintain a temperature of 78 to 88 degree Fahrenheit. Benefits of silkworm According to many people, silkworms are the healthiest insect which you can feed to your pet. You can't beat the low fat content and nutritional value of a silkworm. Silkworms are high source of calcium, protein, iron, magnesium, sodium and vitamin B1, B2 and B3. Let's compare the value of silkworm with four more common feeders. 
still forms look and taste better for many animals than any other type of feeders. Silkworms cannot jump and escape or hide unlike many other insects and they are slow moving and are easier for your animals to catch. Silkworms are easy to digest and swallow. Silkworms can't bite or harm your animals because they don't have a sharp jaw or legs. Mature silkworms can grow 10 times bigger than crickets. And in a popular nationwide pet store, small crickets are sold 9 cents each. And you will notice that for that same amount of meat, our silkworms substantially worth less. Animals need varieties in their diet to remain healthy. Silkworms even get response from picky eaters or animals which are on a hunger strike. Silkworms don't need a, any special containers or any water. Silkworms don't produce a annoying order or sound. Crickets die off early and whereas our silkworms are much more hearty and can live for longer. Process of sericulture A female silk moth lays about 100 eggs at a time. The eggs laid by the silk moth are stored on cloth or paper and are kept in hygienic or appropriate conditions. The eggs are warm to a suitable temperature for the larvae to hatch from the eggs. The larvae feed on the mulberry leaves which are kept on the clean bamboo trays and increase enormously in size. After 25 to 30 days, these caterpillars are kept in a small chamber of bamboo to spin cocoons. The caterpillar spins a cocoon in which develops a silk moth. The cocoons are kept in the sun or boiled or exposed to the steam. The silk fibers are separate from the cocoons using of special machines. This process is called the reeling of silk. This entire production takes a mere 72 hours and in which this time we produce 500 to 1200 silken threads. Then this silk fiber is then spun into silk thread which is then woven to silk cloth by weavers. No animal suffers or die during the production of silk. Many people don't know how silk is produced or it's made up of through very cruel. It is a favorable alternative for normal silk to the people who don't believe in harming animals. Silk is the most elegant textile in the world with unparalleled grandeur, natural sheen and inherent affinity for dyes, high absorbance, lightweight, soft touch and high durability known as the queen of textiles the world over. On the other hand, it stands for livelihood opportunity for millions owing to have employment oriented and remunerative nature of its production. The nature of this industry gives enormous employment generation potential. Silk has been intermingled with the life and the culture of the Indians. India has a rich and complex history in silk production and its silk trade dates back to 15th century. Sericulture industry provides employment to approximately 8.25 million persons in rural and semi-urban areas in India during 2015 to 2016.
India has a unique distinction of being the only country producing all five known commercial silk, namely mulberry, tropical tazar, oak tazar, airy and muga, of which muga its golden yellow glitter is unique and prerogative of India. India is the second largest producer of silk in the world. China is the world's biggest producer and chief supplier of silk to the world markets. Now you can see these silk worms are so important in our life and there are many benefits of silk worms. So to stay tuned with such important topics, subscribe my channel and don't forget to press the like button and share with your closest relatives and friends. So it's all for today. Until then, goodbye.